As a newbie freelancer or a general newcomer to the creative market, you need solid hardware that you can afford and that you can trust. To meet the day-to-day -day demands of creative work on one hand and on-time delivery on the other hand, your equipment needs to strike a balance between a reasonable purchase price on one hand and sustained high performance on the other. In this two-part video, we take a look at workstations for creative professionals. Today, we're looking at an entry-level workstation from US PC manufacturer ZDX and a rather unusual graphics card, the Intel Arc A750. Stay tuned. Our machine was assembled by PC manufacturer ZDX in Salt Lake City, USA and comes to a total purchase price of around 1500 euros in the tested configuration. The case is a Fantex Eclipse P600S MIDI tower which shows a solid and high quality build despite the low price of around 160 euros. Two so-called acoustic panels can be removed with a flick of the wrist to provide even more ventilation. Panels reveal an elegant but stable synthetic fiber fabric. Behind this, massive radiators and a deep cool castle 360 EX liquid cooling system ensure the right temperature in the case and on the CPU. The CPU is an Intercore i7 12700K processor with 12 cores and 5 GHz turbo clock speed. In our machine, the CPU sits on an MSI Pro Z690A motherboard, which also houses the 64GB of DDR4 RAM and a 500GB NVMe for Windows 11 Pro. A Seasonic Focus Plus 850W PSU provides the necessary power. On the back of the computer, there are a lot of I.O. ports, including those of an onboard graphics. More I.O. ports are hidden under a small flap on the front of the machine. As a special feature, I installed an Intel Arc A750 GPU with 8GB VRAM in this machine, instead of the included RTX 3060 Ti. We will find out how this Intel graphics card performs later on. First, we turn to the installed Intel i7-12700K CPU. It offers 12 physical cores with a base clock of 2.7 to 3.6 GHz and a turbo clock of 5 GHz. Thus, 24 threads are used with hyper-threading. Let's take a look at the performance with Max on Cinebench. The result in Cinebench is an impressive 23,251 points. This is especially astonishing as the performance of this i7 12-core CPU is thus in the range of a Xeon 24-core CPU as tested in my last video. See link in the video description below. However, the purchase price of the i7 is only 370 euro versus 2500 euro for the Xeon CPU. That is a remarkable price performance ratio and therefore ideal for newcomers in the creative field. During long CPU render processes with Maxon Cinema 4D, the CPU clock levels off at 4.47 GHz, but the CPU temperature never rises above 80 degrees Celsius thanks to the integrated liquid cooling system. The noise development is very moderate at around 46 decibels. And now to the most uncommon component of the machine, the Intel Arc A750 graphics card. As the packaging suggests, the card's focus is clearly on gaming. But is it also suitable for everyday creative use? The build quality already looks fine and doesn't suggest that we're dealing here with a card of only 350 euros purchase price. The Arc A750 and the larger Arc A770 are Intel's flagship GPUs based on the Alchemist chip architecture. Our A750 model offers 8GB of VRAM, 28 ZE cores and 28 ray tracing units. At the same time, it gets by with 225 watts of power via one 8-pin and one 6-pin connector and offers three DisplayPort 2.0 and one HDMI 2.1 connection. We will now take a look at the performance of the Intel Arc A750 in various test scenarios. Included in the comparison is an RTX 3060 Ti, the GPU this machine was pre-configured with. 
Also included is NVIDIA RTX A6000, the high-end beast from my last video about high-end workstations. See link in the video description below. I am curious how these cards compare. GPU rendering with Maxon Redshift or Otoy Octane unfortunately is currently not supported by Intel Arc GPUs. However, the render engine Cycles is currently supported for Blender as of release 3.3. So we can test GPU rendering with the Intel GPU in the form of the current Blender benchmark. Here, the Intel GPU scores with about 1600 points. The NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti scores with around 3194 points and the RTX A6000 reaches about 5470 points. With just half the score of the RTX 3060 Ti in Blender benchmark, the Intel GPU places itself just in the range of maybe an RTX 2080. So here's definitely room for improvement. But as new drivers for the Intel Arc GPUs are published on a very frequent basis, there's also room for optimism. The noise development during GPU rendering with Blender Benchmark is surprising, because there's virtually none. Only a slight background noise of the machine in the range of about 35 decibels is measurable. Let's now compare the viewport performance of Maxon Cinema 4D with the three different cards. For this, I will use my scene Apollinaris Street. See link in the video description. This version of the scene contains 3.5 million polygons. The real-time viewport playback includes shadow maps, depth of field, environment reflections, chromatic aberration and curves. The Arc A750 scores at around 9 FPS, 3060 Ti at 12 FPS and the RTX A6000 at 23 FPS. The result of the Intel card is interesting, especially since the winner of this comparison, the RTX A6000, is 2.5 times as fast, but more than 14 times as expensive. We will test our machine with Puget Bench for After Effects. This benchmark plugin performs a series of standardized steps in order to get a comparable result among different systems. Our i7 Intel GPU machine shows a performance of 1035 points. Equipped with the 3060 Ti, the machine scores at 1061 points. In comparison, the workstation from my last video, equipped with an RTX 6000, only scores at 867 points. This is most likely due to the higher single core clock speed of the i7 machine here. Let's now test the Intel GPU in the field of video encoding, as this card offers hardware-supported encoding and decoding of HEVZ or H.264 video. In this test, my animation light is just fine now had to be converted from ProRes 4 to 2HQ to these formats. When encoding HEVZ, the Intel card is taking 5 seconds to encode the video, while the 3060 Ti needs 4.5 seconds. The RTX A6000 is also taking 5 seconds for encoding, just on par with the Intel card. When it comes to H.264, the Intel card needs 5 seconds to compute, the 3060Ti takes 3.7 seconds and the RTX A6000 4 seconds for finishing the encoding. An equally surprising result can be seen with AI-based upscaling of photos. In this case, the first frame of my animation light is just fine now, had a way upscaled from 1920 pixels width to a full 11,500 pixels width. Sounds like a computationally intensive task. However, the Intel Arc A750 GPU is lightning fast here. It only needs 2.5 seconds of computing time, while the 3060 Ti needs full 22 seconds to complete the task. And the RTX A6000 finishes in 5 seconds computing time. So stunningly, the Intel Arc A750 is the fastest card here. In AI-based upscaling of video in Topaz Video AI, the Intel Arc A750 still performs quite well. In this test, my animation light is just fine now had to be upscaled to 4K resolution with the built-in AI model Gaia HQ. The Intel Arc A750 takes 13 minutes 15 seconds 
the 3060 Ti takes 8 minutes 8 seconds and the RTX A6000 finishes in 9 minutes 57 seconds. Surprisingly, here the 3060 Ti is the fastest card. The ZX i7-12700K machine with Intel Arc A750 GPU and 64GB of RAM offers a very solid build and performance quality for just a total price of around €1500. The 12 core CPU is on the same level as a much more expensive Xeon CPU when it comes to CPU rendering with Cinema 4D. The Intel Arc A750 GPU on the other hand shows an OK performance in Blender Benchmark but shines surprisingly strong in AI tasks and especially in video encoding. Underlined by the After Effects benchmark result, this positions the machine primarily in the field of video editing and motion graphics. At this price point, a clear recommendation for beginners in the creative field. So for now, that's all folks. If you liked this video, click the subscribe button and don't miss any upcoming videos on this channel. See you!